In this video, I'm gonna be explaining the exact trading strategy which I use to generate over hundreds and thousands of dollars in profits. When it comes to your dollar, we're gonna be applying my exact trading strategy in this video. So my trading strategy consists of four points of confluence, which number one is market structure. So we have three other confluence points, which are confluence point number two, three and four, which we will discuss later in this video. So diving into market structure, first of all, market structure, pretty much the basics. I think everybody's familiar with it. In a downtrend, we have obviously lower lows and lower highs. And in an uptrend, we have higher highs and higher lows. So when we look at this piece of market structure over here, what do we have? We have very obvious lower lows and we have very obvious lower highs. So what I'm trying to do in this specific market over here is I'm trying to time when we're gonna be forming a new lower high in order to short the market further in towards the downside for the creation of a new lower low. So how we're gonna enter and everything, I'm gonna be explaining that in a second, but I hope you guys understand what the main focus is within this strategy. So when we have this piece of market structure, what we're gonna draw in is over here, our break of structure. So this over here is our break of structure on the four hour. So this is our four hour BOS. And I'm just gonna mark out the swing points in market structure over here. So we have the high, we have the lower low, and now somewhere over here, I'm expecting and anticipating that there's gonna be a new lower high. Now drawing in my areas of supply and demand because confluence point number two is also known as supply and demand. So when we look at supply and demand, what we want to look for is an area of consolidation within the market because the way that supply is formed is consolidation, push down, then we expect this area of consolidation to be our area of supply from where we expect the market to continue back further in towards the downside. Now looking at this particular piece of market structure, I identify this as my area of consolidation. So I expect this to be my area of supply from where the market could potentially push further back in towards the downside. Now, looking at the current market structure that we're seeing over here, what can we see? Well, we're seeing pretty much an uptrend over here on the lower time frame. So if I dive, for example, into the one hour time frame, you can see that we have pretty much an uptrend consisting of higher highs over here. So a high and a higher high and over here, a higher low. So if you're not focused on what the overall market structure is doing from this high in towards this low, many traders could get caught up in pretty much just trading this internal trend in towards the highs. However, it's very important to understand that the overall swing structure is always king. So on the four hour, this is the main time frame that you utilize swing structure on, and that that four hour is king, and you expect the four hour always to prevail. So we're still focusing on further downside, but we can use that lower time frame trend to our advantage by, for example, looking out for the fact that if we on the lower time frame see a shift in the overall trend, we can then use that as an additional entry point or as a confluence to time our short entry in towards the downside. Now, going back in towards the four hour time frame, what I'll now do is I'll press play and see how the market moves in towards that area of supply. Okay, so what happens now is that we get a push in towards that area of supply over here right, we get one last push. So what happens in this particular situation is that we get a break of this high, or what, the way that we could see this is just simply as a liquidity grab. But if I just go back in towards my confluence points, we've now had a push in towards supply, but what I now wanna do and mark out is also the third point of confluence, which is known as liquidity. And liquidity is pretty much when an area reacts initially to an area of, let's say, support and resistance. So we have support, support, support. Then it flips once it breaks in towards resistance. You see this is the initial rejection of that area of support and resistance. Then what happens is that we grab the liquidity above that rejection of support and resistance, and then we see an aggressive sell-off in towards the downside. This for me signifies that there is liquidity above this high, and after taking out the liquidity, we could now see further continuation in towards the downside. Now, going back in towards confluence point number one, if you're familiar with the fact that we now have a bearish swing structure in the market, so the bearish swing structure from this high in towards this low, we have now focus on a second form of market structure, which is also known as a change of character. And the change of character over here happens to be forming from the low over here. So this high gets broken by this low of this bullish candle, making this low now getting broken over here, your change of character low. So we've now seen a shift in the overall market structure 
in towards the downside. So this is pretty much considered your supply zone as this is the buy before the sell-off which caused this change of character. So now going back in towards market structure, we have swing structure, which is bearish, but now we also have fractal structure, also known as a chalk, a change of character, which is also bearish in towards the downside. So we now have market structure confluence all on our side. Then if we dive in towards supply and demand, we have supply. So we have the supply and demand confluence on our side. We liquidated the high over here, so liquidity is also on our side. And now we're going to dive in towards the fourth point of confluence, which is the premium versus discount. So the premium versus discount pretty much rests on the belief that the market always makes a pullback at least in towards the 50% mark of the swing range. And as we can see, what does the market do in this particular situation? It swings from this high in towards this low, it pulls back in towards the 50% mark, and then it rejects over there after liquidating that high. So now with all these four confluence points in place, I'm now happy to look for that further downside after seeing, for example, a pullback in towards my supply zone and then a further downside push. So in this example, I'm gonna take, for example, this four hour trade. So we set our entry on that area of supply. I put my stop loss above the high and I'm gonna be targeting a new potential lower low on the four hour for a one to two risk to reward. We place the trade over here. So we place the order sell by limit with a 2% risk. We remove the risk to reward tool and we now see the trade play out. So we get tagged in straight away in towards that supply zone. We reject that area of supply. And then after that, we start pushing in towards the downside. So now it gets interesting because once again, what do we see over here? We see a continuation of that fractal structure of that change of character structure, whatever way you wanna call it. This is now your fractal high over here which I explained in the previous video, and we now broke this low over here. So now what I'm looking to see is this area of supply now, which broke this fractal low over here to hold. And I expect that if we get a pullback in towards there, that the market will continue pushing in towards the downside. Now we get a continuation of the trend. So the market starts pulling back, still hasn't tapped in towards that area of supply. We now get one more candle, now price has pulled back in towards that area of supply. So obviously I can now keep on shorting based on the four hour market structure and price action that we're seeing, but I can also go into the lower time frame and look at the 15 minute trend and see what's going on over there. Now, if I focus on the 15 minute trend, what I see happening over here is in fact that the 15 minute is swing bearish in pretty much the same format as the four hour. So this is your 50 minute high over here, and this is your 50 minute low. You never really saw a pullback inside kind of this impulse down. So this means that this is still your swing high, this is still your swing low, and everything that was a trend over here was pretty much just a pullback, facilitating a pullback in towards that four hour area of supply. Now, focusing on the 15 minute time frame, what we can then see is that the market has started to push in towards downside. So we've broken pretty much all these lows over here, seeing a push in towards the downside, so a pullback. So I push in towards the downside, and now once again, we've seen a pullback. So we've seen a break of structure over here on the 50 minute time frame, pulled back in towards four hour supply. Now, if we look at this overall vibe for the sell on the 15, this is also gonna be your 50 minute supply zone. Obviously, we could refine it in towards, let's say this area of supply, or even this extreme candle over here, but because we're just trading with the overall four hour trend, I'm more than happy just to focus on this overall buy before the sell on the 50 minute. Then if we refine that 50 minute area of supply, we can refine it in towards over here, because as we can see, we tap in towards that four hour supply zone and boom, straight away a sharp drop in towards the downside. I can see that we had a trend over here, up, down, up, down, up. And now we've broken that trend in towards the downside. So this over here is your fractal low. Once again, pretty similar to the way that I was explaining it on the four hour time frame. We break this fractal low over here, meaning that this is your valid buy before the sell off. So your valid area of supply. We pull back in towards that supply zone. And from there, I can then take a valid entry in towards the downside. So we place our stop loss above that 50 minute high and we target a one to three risk to reward. So let's just input that trade over here. 
and we can take a market order as we're already inside our area of supply. And I've already seen a change in the overall structure. So we place our order over there. Then we go back in towards the four hour time frame, just to showcase how you can refine your entries based on the four hour and the 50 minute. And we see the trade dump and tank in towards the downside and hit both the 50 minute and the four hour take profit level. 